Nashville, and this is Nonstop Scene DFW. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to take you to some of the hot spots of Dallas, from Deep Ellum to the House of Blues, and right here at the Granada Theater. This place is one of the most storied venues in the city of Dallas, and Andrew Tanelian takes us behind the scenes. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. If you like music and history, How you guys doing? it's a musical resort. Yeah, yeah, what's up, man? Granada in Dallas offers both. Since you're all sitting in the same section. Oh, it's absolutely cool that we can have, you know, an iconic presence like the Granada still, still in existence, still running. W-E-I-T-Z. The Granada has held on to its artistic roots since opening in 1946 as a 700-seat movie house. Now, it's a concert hall. That's the magic of working at a place like the Granada is that every night it's something brand new. Unlike much larger venues with corporate names, everyone who performs here adds to the culture. It seems like everyone that plays here leaves a little bit of their soul, and so when you come here, you feel that, and it just inspires you even that much more. Gus Samuelson has played here a handful of times. This has got deep meaning. This is one of my favorite venues to play. His motivation is linked to Granada's Hollywood past. In fact, one of my fondest memories is when I was younger, I came here while it was a movie theater, and Chet Atkins played here. And being a, a guitar player, you know, coming to see Chet Atkins is like going to the mountain. For another musician, the intimate setting is what makes Granada unique. You get that energy exchange, you know, from, from us to them and back, it comes back. So you really have an opportunity to wind it up and make something happen, you know. It's great for uh, good people going to see good music. An experience that's appreciated by both the artist and audience. There isn't very many places like this left. They either gotten really old and renovated and turned into something else and who knows what, you know. Michael Schroeder knows he's lucky to own a part of history while helping shape Granada's future. I can't believe they pay me to do this. A lot of great bands have performed here at the Granada Theater, especially local North Texas bands. Somebody's Darling is one of them. James Chippendale gives us a look at their great music. We're at the Amsterdam Bar in Exposition Park. This band, staying true to its Texas roots, is country with a twist. Let's catch up with Somebody's Darling. Like Dallas, you know, kind of being a hip cool town, we got thrown into that. And so, even though we were writing like rock and roll music, we had a country base, so we got thrown into the, the country world of it all, but had like the hip Dallas influence behind us, you know, that's kind of kept us different from other bands. Like I've been wrong, never running up this as much as like we love to write and play our instruments, like we love to go and play music for people and be be entertainers on top of everything else, you know. I think we all kind of have that heart in us too as well as music. It's not staring a bottle of wine, yeah, a little bit of can change in my world. I still kill all my favorite air. Oh, what's my sin? We travel in a 92 Dodge van that we bought for 400 bucks in Kansas. <laughs> the AC barely works, but we put in bunk beds and uh, yeah, have a place to sleep. And, but so far the road's been good. So what do you guys think you'd be doing without, if you weren't playing music? I like my day job, I'm a piano tech. I'm Steinway Hall, so I mean, I've got that, but I can't imagine myself not playing music. So. You're edgy, I mean, where does your style come from? I mean, how is Dallas and influenced your style. We kind of have some of the urban kind of classic rock influences too that really go well with the country and I don't yeah. see that a lot but that's really what we are. We're a classic rock band that's also in the country. We play like some rock and roll songs that are a lot of fun and like I think another two-step cold-hearted lover that are like hit you in the face, rock and roll, you know, boot stomping like kind of music. We like to play those because those are fun and that's what we do but then we also have like put out your fire that's a slow kind of like love ballad but it's still like in your face rock and roll here we go you know what I mean and you, you get both sides and I think we kind of have that yin and yang of the band that's cool you know it's always good to play at home because it's your home crowd and they've grown up with you and it's a bigger crowd but 
I don't know. Sometimes we'll be on the road, like we played Wichita, Kansas not too long ago, and it was a big crowd, and surprisingly, they really took to us. From bands you do know to some you may not, the Granada Theater has been the place to be for up and coming artists. We met Adele here just a couple of years ago, right after she won her first Grammy. <laughs> I'm a big girl, I'm mouthy, and I'm very, very British, and I ain't hiding that for no one. Like the first boy, the first record was about, I knew that would happen. I knew he was trouble, I knew he wouldn't be faithful to me, and that's why I kind of gravitated towards him, I think. I think that's really important, though, because I think otherwise you're going to start to crumble, and then it's kind of you're a bit of a lie. And, you know, I think music is really personal. It shouldn't be untouchable and unapproachable like how it used to be back in the day. It's like the Oscars, the Grammys, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's really, really phenomenal. And then when I won, it was just amazing, like, I found out that I won the first one in the car on the way to the red carpet. I mean, even the driver got excited. I just started shouting out the window, I won a swear word Grammy. See if I cried, see if I shed a single I've never had a problem with, like, with, like, my, my figure or like what kind of personality I have or like the colour of my hair or my face or I've never had this has never been an issue for me and my friends but, and luckily because I'm doing so well and I'm kind of in everyone's faces a lot more people are aware that you don't have to look like Britney Spears to for your dreams to come true. I don't think the second album will have my definite sound either you know I'm still really young I don't even know what kind of woman I want to be yet let alone what kind of musician. And I could hold you for a million to make you feel my Your voice is, like smoking gives you that soulful, it's tough, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, it, it does help, but it's my, my lungs can't hold that much air anymore. <laughs> I smoke a lot of cigarettes, and since I stopped, smoke, since I stopped drinking, I smoke even more cigarettes. But to be honest, since I stopped drinking, like, you don't, you don't see me out and about in London anymore. You see me in like a DIY store or like a DVD store and no one wants to see photos of a celebrity behaviour. Coming up on non-stop scene at DFW, we're switching gears and changing locations. The hot spots in Deep Ellum, next. <laughs> For something a little quirky and fun. Down in Deep Ellum, there's a place that was named after a ZZ Top song, LaGrange. Andrew Tanelian has more about that hot spot. If you like music, you'll feel at home at LaGrange. We wanted something kind of boutique, quirky, fun, um, something that had history. The name comes from the Texas town and also from the famous ZZ Top song. Nestled in Deep Ellum, Stephanie Schumacher and her husband opened the place in late 2009 after another popular club opened up across the street. We were looking for a place where people that have grown up in Deep Ellum could come and relax. You can enjoy the music inside, from the bar, or even from the sprawling patio in the back. It's all designed to celebrate the area and the musical tastes enjoyed by those who live here. Deep Ellum has been around since 1873, and so for us, we wanted to, to put something here that was gonna make a mark. Both Stephanie and I both believe that Deep Ellum is an, an amazing neighborhood with a, a lot of people who care about it, and we really wanted to kind of give back. Whether it's live music, a private bash, or movie night, the party here goes all night long. You can walk in, wear what you're wearing, and nobody cares. You know, nobody cares what you drive up in, nobody cares what you're, you know, what kind of jewelry you've got. Schumacher says the space is the perfect size to always pack the room. Anthony Delabano, playing with Spectre 45, has been playing in the area for almost a decade. 
and always appreciates the crowd. Deep Ellum's got a strong music scene, a strong uh, group of people that are working with it and trying to get it to grow, and uh, we're hoping to bring it back even stronger year to year to year, you know? What we do really successfully are the really great one-off indie shows, um, lots of traveling bands coming through where we can build them with local bands. Offering flavors of music you might have a hard time finding outside Deep Ellum. I'm really hoping when people leave here that they had a great time, that the drinks were good, the service was great, the sound is awesome, the, the layout is great, the patio is awesome, just everything. If you want a burger and a little band, Adair's is probably the place for you. We're at Legendary Adair's in Deep Ellum, Texas, best known for their burgers, but also home to some great Texas music. Let's catch up with the Ben Smith Band. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Adairs. Jack Ingram was uh, in SMU and uh, played here like every Tuesday night as a college student. And you know, I was a big Jack fan when I was in college, and that's where I first heard about this place. You know, so it's got that it's kind of one of its claims of fame now. <laughs> It's got a cool little vibe, and it's also known for its food. Yeah, the burgers are pretty awesome. The burgers yeah, are they, got a, they got a little uh, jalapeno toothpick to the top of them. It's good stuff. I'm here to see Ben Smith. So what got you into it? Well, I was 18. As 18, I bought this truck, a senior in high school, and it didn't have a radio. and. Uh, so I drive around and have no tunes at all, you know. So uh, one day I just started. I remembered we were watching like Garth Brooks on Austin City Limits, and I just happened to remember some of the words to his songs and started singing them in my truck because I didn't have any tunes, you know. I was like, you know, I'm not that bad a singer. I had to get a guitar and learn how to play, and that's you know, asked asked for one for my birthday, and that's how it started. You know? I've been following Ben for quite some time, but I know all the words to his songs. His CD is awesome. There's slow songs, there's fast songs. I mean, you can jitterbug, you can slow dance, I mean, all two step in. Since I've known you, things have been the same. I think anybody should do what they enjoy doing, no matter how old they are, you know? Like, it doesn't matter if you're going to get famous or not, it's all about just doing what you enjoy doing. You know, getting to do it with a couple of good friends, you know, can't ask for anything better than that. Ben Smith rocks. From a little bit country to a lot of rock and roll and soul, next we're taking you to the House of Blues. rock and roll in your life. Bullet for My Valentine may be right up your alley. They were playing at the House of Blues and that's where James Chippendale found them. Take a look. This is not spandex and guy liner. This is straight ahead metal and it's back on top of the charts. Let's go check out Bullet for My Valentine. You know it! They're just my favorite band and I love them. How's the, the metal scene and the music scene in Dallas? It's great. We always have like always have a great show when we're in Dallas. We have quite a few friends from Dallas. What, uh, Jackknife? Yeah. Local band called Jackknife. Don't know okay. if you know those guys, but we're friends with those. We went on tour with them. Like our first ever UK tour. US. Was on, uh, US tour, sorry. Yeah, it was on tour. They was, those guys were on the same tour as us. It's pretty amazing. You know, I mean, it's, it's like amazing wherever you go. Like, but to come like across the world, you know, to like even if it's America or Japan, Australia, and to have the people outside waiting for you like I was before you even do to hit stage. It's an amazing feeling. Our fans are completely insane. Well, we did this uh, small like warm-up show in London a, a few weeks back, and there was like a free show for the fans, and there was like a hundred people sleeping out. I'm 
from Abilene. Ooh, I left school to come here and see them, so I'm pretty excited. We have a very broad audience from 10 year olds to 60 year olds, quite literally, you know what I mean? So these, we, we get criticized a lot for having a very young audience and people think that's a bad thing. It's like, are you tripping? These are gonna be here until they're 20, 30 years old in the future, you know what I mean? Like we were with Metallica. Grew up growing up like 12 years old. I'm 30 years old now and I'm still a complete lunatic for Metallica, you know what I mean? So hopefully that's the case with the, the, the young boys and girls that come into our shows. Yeah, I mean, it's like, all around the world, these people come up to us and just say, like, we influence them to like, pick up a guitar or pick up a pair of drumsticks and start drumming and stuff. And, yeah. and for me, that's what it's, it's really all about. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just nice to see because obviously, like Metallica and bands like that, have done it for us, and now we're doing it for other kids, which is cool. This band got me into music. I really didn't like music until I was like 12 or 13, and I heard them, and I really started liking it. So I'm really excited to see them. Seeing the like audience reaction and hearing them singing lyrics I, I wrote on a piece of paper one day in my bedroom back at me and that's amazing. Well favorite songs for us to play at the moment are obviously new stuff because it's fresh and it's happening and it's good and I think it's the best material we've ever written. So songs like Your Betrayal, Fever, Alone, these are all new songs off our new record which are so much fun to play. You guys must have been raised well. I mean, good families and good friends around. Our upbringing from our parents was very good and very, very grounded, and we're, we're very grounded people, and we're very proud of that. On a Sunday afternoon, you may want a little bit of brunch and a little bit of gospel. Well, the House of Blues has you covered. Here's Christy Nelson with their Sunday gospel brunch. I don't know what you come to do. I come to lift him up. Lady Diamond. I come to praise his name. Is back. I come to shout for joy. Her real I name is Katrina Dalway, but it's yeah. Lady Diamond when she's on stage at the House of Blues. I come to clap my hands. Yeah. Belting out gospel while an upbeat audience dines on waffles and omelets. It's a synergy like no other. We all we take each other on a journey, and we take we take each other away from everyday life and we just praise, have fun, we dance, we, we shout, we clap hands, and then at the end of the show, it's like, okay, we can't wait to see each other again. <laughs> the Sunday Gospel Brunch is a fixture at House of Blues locations across the country, but the Dallas edition has been on hiatus for several months. We had to revamp it, we have to uh, make some changes, and I think for the better. Is anybody in the house with me? started back in 2007 and got a great response. I would have people coming up to me from New Zealand, Paris, from, <laughs> oh my God, Jamaica, you know, from uh, Australia saying, hey, we heard about the House of Blues here in Dallas and we wanted to come here because we heard it's so wonderful. The new version will be held in the dining room rather than the main stage and scaled back to once a month instead of every week. Lady Diamond says it's great for downtown Dallas. Because of the way we present it and, and how engaging it is, I f we felt that it would, the positioning of it was great to have in the downtown area, along with jazz, along with rock, along with um, uh, R&B and, and hip hop and so forth. <laughs> Coming up on Nonstop Scene DFW, we'll show you where you can get down and dirty in Fort Worth. Music you like. We run the gamut from the hardest metal that you've ever heard to cool jazz to funk to country. Your taste and Lola's in Fort Worth. I like the atmosphere here and definitely love the music. Always a dollar store and a daily. He's singing off the same sheet of music. Part of why musician Scott Copeland performs here once a week. Oh, I love playing here. It's, uh, it's my favorite bar in Fort Worth. Every Wednesday night, man. This is my Wednesday night uh, homage to the Scott Copeland Band. Just one hour. 
Bartender Graham Richardson has worked here since it opened in early 2008. About three years, I guess. About three years is low, a little bit longer than that. It's a too well of a kept secret, I think. You know, we're, we're off of 7th Street and we're on the other side from the development there. But we've been, I mean, you know, we've been around this area and part of this growth for, for 15 years now. Supporting music the way it was meant to be heard. It's really starting to be a dying breed of live music goers. With the internet and people can watch stuff on YouTube nowadays, a lot of people don't go out to live music. It's, it's totally a different thing. There's an energy that you don't get off a CD that you get at a live show. One of many venues helping keep music on the beating path. As neighborhood as we are, we always like to see a fresh face, so just come see us. Have a good time. We're taking you to Fort Worth and one of the best live music venues there. And now we're going to Oak Cliff. You know, we've done uh, burlesque on Friday night and children's shows on Saturday morning, church service on Sunday. So we're pretty broad based. We do a lot of things. The Kessler Theater is kickstarting a new creative arts district for Dallas. So it's a commitment and dedication to jazz and these American art forms, these organic music, this styles of organic music, um, and also a commitment to visual art. And, and poetry, and theater, and film, and uh, writing, photography, every, every kind of creative manifestation you could think of. That's what this neighborhood is about. It's one of the last Art Deco movie theaters built pre-World War II. The Kessler Theater has a storied past, to say the least. Uh, it's since been hit by a tornado, burned to the ground. It's been owned by legendary uh, film uh, star Gene Autry, and then it sat dormant for the last 40 years. More than a live music venue, the Kessler is more of a cultural gathering place in the heart of one of the largest and oldest historic districts in Dallas, Winnetka Heights. It's got a sense of self. It's got a historic element to it with some modern touches, and, um, but they blend together and it works. The Kessler Theater is a creative mecca for all types of artists with one major goal in mind, to make you fall back in love with live music. What we've got to do, the much larger agenda, is to remind people that the live music experience is so much richer than sitting there looking at your computer. You know, it's so much richer than just sitting there at home and, and goofing around on Facebook. Organic instrumentation and virtuoso artists who have a mastery of their instrument are appreciated at the Kessler. This venue, even though it's historic um, and beautiful uh, and it takes you back in time, it's first class, it's state of the art, the equipment is wonderful and it's really, really cutting edge. So, you know, you can kind of get the best performances, not even downtown, you can come right here to, to Oak Cliff and have a world class performance. The acoustics in this building are absolutely extraordinary. And the food and drink isn't bad either. Well, we've been recently awarded as one of the best wine bars in Dallas. We have a custom menu. Everything is organic, made fresh here. Foodies have long known that this area is a great place to come for cuisine. But what a lot of people are starting to recognize is all of North Oak Cliff is a great place to come for arts, culture, and entertainment. The people behind the reopening of the Kessler Theater are keeping the community in mind. But we understand we've got an obligation uh, to the community and that's what Sundays are for is to give back. Only a year in with about 125 events under its belt, the Kessler Theater is really unlike any other in North Texas. They go in there and they sit down and they give the, audi the artists their undivided attention, which you don't see in other clubs. Other people go to other live music venues for other reasons than, than to just see music. They go there to hang out and do whatever it is they do. Here, they come here to really kind of give their attention to the artist and see, see the artist in a place that allows them to put their best foot forward. That's all for this edition of Nonstop Scene DFW. We'll see you next time.